like boxing for me is my passion and for my dad snooker is his undying passion you know it always yeah. has been I mean, how's what? your relationship with snooker do, do, i mean your dad told me that you hated snooker and i, I said well that's a, I said, I said, a lot a lot a lot of the players would be worried <laughs> yeah like i'm fair like he um he he knows that i don't have a passion i don't have a passion for the game yeah that's the the, the truth i have a passion for matchroom yeah so it's not a case it's never a case of oh i'm not interested in snooker i know what it means to him mm. and i know what it means to our business and the legacy of our business so well, that, yeah. that's what he said he said well, even though if you don't like as much you you you're busy and you'll get the best for snooker because you know the business i, I have a responsibility for him yeah. and, and for the business to do that and it's, i think he's in great hands i think steve and everybody's doing a, a, a great job um i think you know it's clear to see that sport is changing it's becoming more serious. It's become, becoming money driven. It's becoming science driven. The characters yeah. are changing in the sport. I and mean, you don't have to go back to Premier League football. You know, you talk, I sit down at these, some of these dinners and stuff like that and talk to like, you know, Paul Merson and Brian Robson and, you know, Roy mm. King. Like, and, and that, that era is changing. When you look at when I yeah. was growing up, I mean, you know, the World Championship, which remains an institution, was something mm. that family would watch like and i know we yeah. were involved in it obviously but every world champs would be me my nan my granddad everyone yeah. just sit glued. The, the problem with sport nowadays and also this is particularly true in snooker is the lack of personalities because of yeah. the series of, of course i mean when you go back to like you were probably steve one of the first guys that were more of the serious mold of you know you were a, a machine of yeah. winning machine where yeah. you started to ruin the but game. I carried on from, from Davis. Yeah, great, man. And if we can win, oh, that's even better. Do you know what I mean? You, you were just a winner. So, yeah. and, and that was, and Davis was a bit like that as well. But mm. that was, that yeah. does take the personality away because people don't get to see your personality. That's right, yeah. You don't care. You're not interested in doing funny videos and going for a pint and a curry and walking back smashed to the hotel and like, you know, you're just going, I'm going to win. So I'm yeah. going to bet. Yeah. It's my guys. And that, that's the mentality of a winner. Now, that winning mentality is, is bred. It's become a more serious game. I mean, it's you know, everywhere. Yeah. Musical, yeah. Well, the, the, the schedule. It's amazing what they've done to the sport. But I, I don't think you're ever going to see sport change back to the days of. Like, I can still rattle off twenty snooker players that were part of my child, and and everyone, yeah. I can tell you what their thing was. Yeah. You know I mean? So like, whether it's like Kirk Stevens in a white suit, whether it's Werbenick drinking his pints, whether it's Alex Hickman, where it's Mio, you know, with his spaghetti and Willie Thorne with his hair and Taylor with his glasses upside down. That's that's yeah, how you I know. it as a fan. Yeah. Now you do it, and I'm still involved in the business. I can tell you all the names, but it's hard to create a, an identity for that. They're player. not as recognisable if they walk down the street, the players, though, as, as perhaps they were in the 80s, 90s. Yeah, that's true. But also, I think we've, we've, we should work harder all round as a, as a business and for the players to try and build that. Like everyone's yeah. got character, everyone's got, mm -hmm. everyone's funny in their own way, but you just got to see it. And that's when yeah. Yeah. you look at things, the rivalries, you know, talking about, you know, Ronnie O'Sullivan and, you know, all of a sudden someone says something about him and, you know, there's that, that's for me an opportunity to build those rivalries. So when they played that match, I was like, guys, you need to actually, this is interesting. You've got a guy who's outspoken now against Ronnie, says he's, mm changed he's you know he's he's sport he's not the same person he's disrespectful he's arrogant let's keep this going go and speak to ronnie you know you've mm. got to build the rivalries and the narratives of, of the matches and the rivalries yep. in the 80s were there three or four fold yeah you know? mm. i think that's important do you, do you think it's not just about snooker do you think like you say eddie the world's just or the world of sport has just changed because you're right we were talking earlier on the podcast about the the atmosphere of the 80s 90s like the drinking and smoking by the table just that sense of like anything goes but you, it's true what you said isn't it you, it's difficult to turn the clock back sports come such a long way in terms of because you're right it's also football I, I used to watch rugby when it was amateur and now again those guys are machines um cricket there used to be a lot more of a culture in sport of just you didn't have to be that fit even at the top level or you know there was no conditioning and the, the science of it the nutritionists but once you've got all that stuff, you, you're never going to see it disappear again. So I suppose, like you say, it's about emphasising the personalities that we have still got. 
yeah and I think you know that's the job of the promotion the marketeers and and you know don't forget you're talking about an era where there was no social media yeah I mean those guys there was no social media you know Mm. yeah phones and stuff like that but like yeah we'll never know what Higgins would have been like on social media (laughs) but I think that you have to embrace the now and you have to look at the future generation There, there is no doubt that snooker has an aging audience so how do we change that how do we make it more watchable for that younger generation you know those those gen z you know fame that people always talk about and that's the that's my kids I, you know you the way people digest content has changed you've seen sports i think the greatest example for snooker is the shootout right yeah. where you know it, it echoes 2020 cricket it echoes yeah. prize yeah. fight boxing it's my guilty pleasure to watch i know but it's like i couldn't can play in it but i'd love to watch it <laughs> i can understand how every real snooker fan hates the shootout especially like i, I can imagine the players if, because it's a crapshoot. You it doesn't it, ability kind of goes out the window. Yeah. You could be the best player in the world and lose to, you know, C nine. Yeah, it's a leveler, yeah. But you that's the kind of format that's actually gonna reinvigorate the sport a little bit. And mm. so you have to suffer that sometimes. And like when we did prize fighter when boxing was dying, that invigorated boxing. I was sitting there going, This isn't it's not really for me. But I'm looking around, all of a sudden the audience is changing. You know, the, mm. the viewing figures are going up. And, and we see the success of the shootout. And I'm not saying we need to expand formats like the shootout, but mm. we just think on our feet. And you've got mm. I'm boxing. Like I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, snooker. I'm quite well placed as a an outsider to look at the sport and understand, you know, that we have the the, the key, the major events that are, continue to thrive. And you know, I continue yeah. like the Masters and the Worlds and stuff like yeah. that. But, and those events are making a lot of money. They're in a good place. The investment that probably players don't see and, and also fans don't see is what's going on behind the scenes in terms of building an infrastructure and longevity for the sport. And that mm-hmm. comes actually a framework of tour school and tournaments week in, week out and an opportunity for players and, and younger players to actually see they have a future in the sport because without younger players coming through, we really need to unearth some young players that yeah. people say oh who's this kid you know he's that's like, one that's one of the questions i get asked most when i'm doing exhibitions or whatever is there any young talent coming through and i say well unfortunately not not really in the uk not really yeah, i mean china, a lot sure. of the, the best young players are from china unfortunately yeah. so we, we, we need to find a way of getting young players i think in the uk back playing snooker but i think one of the ways you do that is to show them that there's a future in the sport yeah. You know, when, yeah. you off, when you see a Q school and a schedule where you can play every week competitively around the world, if you yeah. have a game, you know, it's there for you. Yeah. Now, yeah. We, we all we all understand the challenges of saying to a young person these days, do you want to be a professional snooker player? Mm. Hard enough getting it, them into a cool sport. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. Fine. They want to be on Instagram. They want to, you know, they want this, they want that. So. I think that there, there's challenges, but when you have the history of the sport and you have the broadcast relationships, and particularly when you look at growth in, you know, the Far East and China, I think I think we've done well to stave that off to a place where I think it would have been very easy, perhaps, if I was in charge, to take the World Championships maybe to China. And I, to I, I was I was going to ask you that in, in, in a minute about what your thoughts about staying at the Crucible. Would you move it? I mean, I think. Because of, you know, even if my old man was here or not here, you know, especially if he wasn't here, I think if I did that every day, I'd be kind of looking up at the heavens. Going, <laughs> that's, <He'd haunt> you. <laughs> that, that's something personal to him. And, you, yeah. know, you know, just as yeah. well, Steve, my old man loves a pound, though. But yeah. he does some morals and, and ethic. And, and that's one that I've always said to him. And he's gone, no, no, the world champs has to stay at the crucible, you know, mm-hmm. because to him, like when he walks into the crucible, I see it. You know, we, we had a game there, and he's like, "Oh, this place," you know, and that's a yeah. passion. Oh, so we've got to be careful. You know, we know that yeah, the, that that area of the world is a massive, you know, powerhouse for snooker and emerging market. There's going to be a lot of investment there. But once you make that move, it puts snooker yeah. in this particularly in a really would, bad place. Would you think an, an idea for the world for the, for the world is maybe like the British Open? You have four or five venues that you alternate, and it and at one time you will go back to the Crucible, like you go back to St Andrews, 
and that would be so yeah. special to go yeah. back to the crucible. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I mean, there's a lot of opportunities around the world. We, you know, we as a business, we talk to a lot of governments about hosting international events, whether it's boxing. I mean, we just did. I don't know if you saw the Hanoi Open yesterday in Vietnam. It's unbelievable. Three thousand people there for our for our mm. nine ball pool event. So there are governments looking to bring major tournaments, but I don't know. I think. Yeah, and then you look at the Crucible, and my dad always says, you know, we've gone on sale. So we sold out immediately. I was like, well, actually, you almost need a bigger venue. Yeah, you could sell yeah, out several times, eh? Yeah. Having the event. At yeah. The, and that's something that's quite unusual for him. Mm. But at the same time, you know, he's it, for him, it's a really important event and part of his life. And when you go there, to be fair, it's a, yeah. I went last year for the first time in a couple of years, and it's quite amazing to see the people yeah. Like to them, that's a mm. really important moment in the not just mm. their calendar in their life. Yeah, is, is yeah. Crucible, you know, so that I, is something think, you can't buy. Yeah, I think that every, listen, all sport is is driven and led by money, and that's why we've got to try and keep increasing prize pools and making the events more attractive. And then that's when ultimately that younger generation, which we talked about, you start yeah. to see the darts. You know, now young darts players are looking at the money at the top end of the sport. You've got five, mm. six, seven guys, you know, making a million a year playing playing darts. And, and the younger generation say, well, there's actually a future for me. Yeah. 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 Do, do you think it would make a difference, Eddie? I sometimes see some of the younger players um, on the circuit talking about how the atmosphere should be like more casual. That they, they, they should encourage the audiences to, you know, make more noise or like get do away with dress codes and stuff. What do you think about all that? Like, Do you think younger players would feel yeah. more... Welcomed if it wasn't quite as traditional. I see it and I get it. For me, one of the attractive parts of snooker, I guess, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in my mid forties now, so it, I'm not necessarily that audience. But for yeah, me, I'm the same. I'm, a, I'm quite conservative about this stuff. But yeah, snooker for me is black tie. Right, yeah. snooker is. Shh, do you know what I mean? And it's yeah. it, the intensity of the yeah. pressure the moment yeah but i think we can mix that up you know again going back to cricket i think cricket's a great example of formats you know there's no problem going to a 2020 or 100 game and mm. everyone screaming and shouting the players are wearing different colors yeah. you know then you go back to the ashes yeah, yeah you've still got the traditional right. tournaments but you just find other formats you find other ways but for yeah. me i don't mind to see tournaments where players are you know in relaxed clothing and people are shouting and there's music and the you know the the entrances are all but for me like institutional stuff needs to remain institutional mm. it always fascinated yeah. me in a player walk in you know with his i mean i guess looking back now subconsciously you almost wanted to see what the player was wearing sometimes in yeah. that day. yeah How, you know what color was the tuxedo and yeah. but then maybe that new audience is looking at it saying why are these people wearing black tie like what's that is ridiculous yeah. but, to play but, sport yeah I, I, I think that's what attracted china though to snooker that that sort of gentleman's yeah. sport that, i think yeah. that's what made it so popular over there oh that's yeah. interesting that hadn't occurred to me 